Our headlines for you today. Crews continue to battle wildfires in La Palma. And there are warnings of record temperatures for millions in Europe and North America. Falling short, a plan for 40 new hospitals in England by 2030 won't be met, according to the government's spending watchdog. Consistently doing them harm, the scathing conclusion of a report into a government compensation scheme set up for victims of terror. I was in the right place at the right time. I wasn't doing anything wrong, but I feel like I'm being punished. Good morning. Car insurance premiums have jumped nearly 20% in the past year. Insurers say it's because repairs are costing them more. But there are ways to lower your quote. I'll look at how you can save money. Good morning. There's a new king on the grass at Wimbledon. And Carlos Alcaraz said it was a dream come true after the 20-year-old beat Novak Djokovic in a thrilling men's singles final. And whilst parts of Europe and the US continue to scorch, it's business as usual here in the UK. Sunshine showers and rather cooler. The UK has signed a trade deal with 11 countries in Asia and the Pacific, including Japan and Australia. The business secretary, Kemi Bandanok, defended the decision to join the trading bloc known as the CPTPP, despite government estimates that it will just add 0.08% to the UK economy over 10 years. She's described it as a momentous occasion. An entire pod of 55 whales has died after becoming stranded on a Scottish island. 15 were alive when they first washed up on the island of Lewis, but they were euthanized on welfare grounds as it was unsafe to refloat them. Experts say the whales are known for their strong social bonds and suspect they became stranded after a female became unwell while giving birth. Emergency services remain at the scene of a fire at a 200-euro hotel in Brighton on the south coast of England. High winds have hampered efforts to put out the blaze at the Royal Albion Hotel. After crews were called to the scene on Saturday, no one has been injured, but buildings nearby have been evacuated. Look at the front of today's newspapers and the Mirror leads with news of drug trial results that could herald the beginning of the end of Alzheimer's disease. It says a new treatment could reduce patients' mental decline significantly. Uh, we're going to talk about exactly that uh, this morning on the programme at 8.30. Now, like lots of this morning's papers, The Times has a picture of the new Wimbledon champion, Carlos Alcaraz. Did you watch that match? It's the main story. Also, as you can see on the front page there, that homeowners are living on so-called negative budgets now, where their income is no longer meeting their basic costs because of high interest rates. In the Daily Telegraph, it has an interview with the Prime Minister who wants to take action on university degrees. He said the policy should say to young people that there are good alternatives to university. Uh, the picture there, as you can see, Princess Charlotte enjoying all the drama, the ups, the downs and everything in between yesterday on <laughs> Centre Courts. Getting involved. Yeah, really was <laughs> yeah. getting involved. Uh, that the picture there. Um, and I just want to show you another picture, if we can. Uh, Princess Charlotte once again. But there we go. Uh, also with the rest of the family in the royal box, Prince George there cheering along. Uh, it was a pretty long match, wasn't it? It was very long. About five hours? Yeah, it, it, some of the rallies were mad, weren't they? But I love the way, look at this. I know that everybody in the royal box is completely neutral, but you do get a sense <laughs> that the two royal children there are cheering the 20-year-old Spaniard on. Yeah. And who can blame them? The one person who probably wasn't neutral was the Spanish king. He was there as well. He was doing his best to be neutral. It was his very <laughs> calm applause. It was so exciting, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was amazing. And at every just point, I thought, oh, Djokovic is going to win. Djokovic is going to bring this back. He's going to... And he didn't. And just 20. Yes. Like a really wise head on yes. very young shoulders. Yes. Uh, Mr Alcaraz yesterday. A lot more from him, I think. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, one story I think you're going to like from the inside pages this morning. This is in The Times. Apparently, working from your sun lounger is on the rise. I'm in already. Tell me more. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> Apparently so. Um, actually, working away from the office or perhaps working from the beach is becoming the latest corporate trend. Growing numbers of companies are allowing staff to base themselves wherever they want over the summer months. Oh, Can so you, you just pick where you want to sort of holiday but not holiday. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Thomas Cook saying we've had people spend a month in India or China with their family or others work from their family's holiday home and enjoy working from a different desk. I imagine you probably wouldn't even need a desk. Uh -oh. You just need good Wi-Fi. Good lap.
yes. and laptop on. Yes. Uh, well, where are we taking this? Should we go? <laughs> where should to we the head? beach, Ben, always. Do you think? Yes. You carry that bit, I'll carry that bit. <laughs> Hand luggage only. Do you think we get away with it? <laughs> sure. No. <laughs> no. Well, time now to take a look at this morning's front pages, starting with The Guardian, leading there with the alarm of a second heat storm in southern Europe, with countries there, including Italy, Greece and Spain, expecting record temperatures this week. Now, the Metro warns of raw pollution alerts in 54 hotspots as millions prepare for a beach staycation. And the Times, uh, their rising rates um, push more households into the red, reads the front page there of the Times. Uh, I think we can show that to you um, as it looks at the impact of the cost of living crisis. Let's see how the eye is looking. It's front page there, reporting on Labour leader facing anger from his party after ruling out a change to a Conservative policy. And this is how the front of the mail's looking. PM vows to curb rip-off degrees, reads the front of the Daily Mail. They look at controls being introduced to protect students. The Telegraph leads on the same story, saying that university students are being sold a false dream. And the Daily Express, they're reporting on a number of assaults committed at police stations across the country. The Mirror says drug trial results are to be revealed that could herald the beginning of the end of Alzheimer's disease. And according to the Star, experts want people to love seagulls because they're not an enemy. Mm, I don't know about that. I'm not going to hurt them, but I'm not going to love them. You know. They keep nicking my chips, that's what they do. <laughs> and if you want to see any of those front pages again or read the stories, just scan the QR code, which is on your screen.